because it was requested, I'm doing a video on segment addition postulate. Not really that difficult of a concept. You may wonder why my handwriting looks like uh, possibly a disturbed child has written it, and I have really have no explanation for why I wrote it this way, but um, this is not supposed to be some sort of uh, little symbol over the T there to make it change how it sounds or anything. It's, I would just wrote it wrong, I guess. Anyway, um, when we talk about the segment addition postulate, we're talking about the idea that if I have something broken into parts, if I just add those parts together, I can figure out how long the entire thing is. So that's why the uh, that little block set is there. You should be able to notice that there are two different colors there. If you don't, then adjust your screens accordingly. So I have one, two, three purple ones. So if I know that the entire segment is five blocks long and I know that this segment is three so I know the whole thing is five one two three four five and I know the purple section is three it's really easy to know that the part that's left over would be five minus three which is of course two that's basically what the segment addition postulate is if I know that the distance from one wall in the classroom to the other is 300 inches and I know that the distance between one wall and where I'm standing is 200 inches, I can easily say that the distance between my uh, where I'm standing and the other wall is 100. So that's what the ba segment addition postulate basically says. This is what it looks like. There's three types of problems that you might see. I'm going to try to make this really short, or as short as I can with covering everything. So you have this drawing, and it says if EF is equal to 5 and EG is equal to 21, then what is the value of FG? It will often also say that these drawings are not drawn to scale, which means that you may have numbers that don't make any sense based on what the picture looks like, but it doesn't matter because they're not to scale, so they're, uh, the company or whoever makes the questions are not responsible for that sort of thing. The most important part that you can do is make a statement about the picture before you plug anything else in, because the way that the questions generally provide information, EF or EG or whatever, doesn't always come in a nice organized way. It would be simple if the first number they gave you represented the big, the length of the whole segment, the second one represented the length of the first part, or the uh, that first small segment and the third was the uh, the second small segment but it doesn't always work out that way so if you just look at the picture and make a statement about it before you do anything else life becomes much easier it's the same by the way for angle addition postulate so I'm gonna say that the big segment is EG and I know that segment EG is equal to EF plus FG if you do this one step, everything else becomes much easier because you can solve equations when you have to or uh, just plug things in. In this one, it's even simpler than it would seem. So EF is equal to 5. Um, EG is 21. Once you have the numbers, you can just plug them in beneath. And then you just solve it like an equation. To get rid of plus 5, I need to subtract 5. Segment FG is equal to um, 16. That's pretty easy, right? Now the hard part was setting it up so you know whether or not you're supposed to add or subtract there. And in this case, we had to subtract. Not a big deal. Let's look at another one that's a little bit more complicated. There's three types, by the way. There's the type that they just give you numbers and you just tell how long the segment is. The next is when you have to solve for x. And the third type that you'll generally see is uh, one where you have to solve for x and then plug it back in. This question just asks for what x is. So I'm going to start these like I always do, which is to make a statement. EG is equal to the little, the first smaller segment, so EF plus FG. After this, plugging things in should be simple. EF is 10X plus 10. FG is 21, so I'm going to put plus 21. And often, uh, when you get to angle addition postulate, they'll say it's degrees. Those are interchangeable with your constant or variable or your uh, integer terms. EG is 211. All I did was take the information and write it down underneath. Solving equations, I'm going to is all I'm doing at this point. So I'm going to add 10 and 21 and get 31. I don't know why I decided to write an extra 1 there. It's 211. So subtract 31 from both sides. I get 180. 10x equals 80. So to get rid of times 10, I need to divide. So x 
is equal to 18 and I may even want to bother with going back up here and plugging in 18. So it's a really simple setup as long as you write this statement everything else becomes very easy. One more type that can be confusing but really shouldn't be. I wrote this one out in some scattered fashion but it's not really that complicated. It gives you these three pieces of information it asks about these. So I need to write the statement first e.g. is equal to EF plus FG and this said uh, originally when I looked at the problem it said it was not drawn to scale even though I didn't put that here. EG is 23 EF is 3X minus 20 plus FG is 2X minus 7. So I need to draw that line through there. Combine like terms 3x plus 2x is 5x. Negative 20 minus 7 should give me negative 27. I have 23 over here. I need to add 27 to both sides. And I've, I'm going to have to take this over here. So I'm going to rewrite it out so I get 50 equals 5 x divide by 5 so x is equal to 10 so I can put that answer right there sometimes the questions ask you things like um, what is the value of FG but they don't ask you for X you still have to find X to find FG and we'll talk about why in like three seconds a little more than that but um, make sure you answer the question they ask you. If they ask you about X, make sure that the answer that you have is for X. But if they ask you about the length of one of the segments, don't tell them what X is because that's not what they want to know. And most likely in a multiple choice scenario, they will give you the value for X. So say this question only asked about EF. One of the multiple choice answers will probably be 10, even though EF isn't necessarily 10. It's something else. But make sure you answer the question they ask. If you were born on May 3rd of 1991 and I ask you what your birthday was, you may say 1991. Well, it's the right answer, but not to the question that I ask you. So make sure that you give the right answer to the right question. Now, if they ask me what EF is, I know that EF is equal to 3x minus 20. So I need to write down 3x minus 20. To find the numerical value, I just need to plug in the 10 that I know is the same as x. So it's really 3 times 10 minus 20. 3 times 10 is 30 minus 20 gives you 10. How ironic. I said that EF wouldn't necessarily be 10 and then it turned out to be that way. I don't know if that's ironic. I really don't think that it is. It's just a coincidence, but anyway. Um, I was trying to make an important point, and then I ended up making it invalid by using that as an example. Anyway, FG is the same type of thing. FG is 2x minus 7. I just need to plug in that 10 from down below. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20 minus 7. So my final answer for FG is 13, which looks like a B now that I've written it so small. 13. So it's a really simple question to um, they're usually very simple questions to answer, but just make sure that you match everything up. The more you write down the e the more likely you are to get the question correct. If you have multiple choice questions, they'll probably give you answers like x is equal to 10, ef is equal to 10, and fg is equal to 13, but they're very they're also very likely to give you x is equal to 10, ef is equal to 13 and FG is equal to 10. So they'll just flip these two around in their values. The more you mark them up, the easier it is to make sure you get the right answer. So I have EF is equal to 10. I need to make sure that I give this choice as opposed to this one. So just be careful about what you a answer when they ask you questions. Setting up is really easy. This is the most important step. And that's how you get uh, segment addition postulate.